Hello everybody, Dave Shopius here. This is an update to bring you up to speed about where I'm at with my B9 rail system. Uh, this system is uh, to deliver my arm, my B9 arm, outside of the torso of the B9 robot so it can flex and move around. Uh, if you guys remember the movie or the show, uh, the show basically, um, back from the 60s, uh, this arm uh, was retracted inside the robot most of the time and then whenever he wanted to move around it would move out uh, and move around. So I'm trying to recreate that S to bring you guys up to speed for those who haven't seen the rest of my videos. The idea is to, uh, I mounted this carriage on this rail system. Um, I made I, I got this rail system from I guess IGUS.com um, you can look uh, on the website, it's the mono slide system. It consists of a carriage and a square bar slide. And I've modified it a little bit, um, a whole lot actually. Um, I couldn't use their bolt, carriage bolt system that actually would deliver it in and out because I just didn't have the room. Um, my tolerance is too tight the way I want to build this. And you can see the torso basically wraps around. This is the inside of the torso. On this the diameter that I have cut right here, so there's no there's no room. Um, basically, I only had a little bit in the back here, and no room in the front for their big um, system that they use to to bring their carriages. So what I did, I cut some holes in the um, in the system in the the rail system. Added my endpoint stops. Uh, we'll get into that in a minute. Back here and here, and. Uh, built a motor system set up down here with pulleys uh, this is a wi uh, car window electric car window motor and uh, I built a motor mount where the pulley system that I built sits inside so you can see I have uh, synthetic cable Vectron, I think it's called. Uh, it's got a Vectron core that comes up either way, the front and the back, and uh, goes through and goes over these through the deck dollies or blocks that I got from Harkin. And that's the stuff that, um, like miniature sailboat, yacht, RC um, hobbyist guys use um, to, to handle the sails on their rails. I'm sorry, the sails on their yachts and their boats. Um, and then uh, I attached it uh, in there, came up around the back. You can see I have it around the back of the um, carriage and I kind of rounded that really nice so it wouldn't dig into the cable and ruin it. The front and the back, it's hard to see right now. Um, and I have, a, a, it goes past a, uh, like a, some uh, washers with rubber, rubber grommets on it that I have through the carriage. And they just basically um, clamp down on it and don't cause any problems. Uh, I was having problems before of using the washers without the grommets and they were destroying. Uh, the, the threads on the bolts and the uh, steel washers were destroying uh, the um, synthetic cable sheathing. sheathing. Um, and then you can see I also added a post in the center there where it goes past and around and back through that relieves a lot of the stress and, and the uh, threads biting in to the um, to the uh, cable so it's it's a smooth post back there so it's a nice thick transition a nice round and she comes around and it's easy for me to uh, adjust this cable when it, if it gets too slack or if I want to take it apart I just undo these cap nuts here they're they're nylon threaded so they've always got tension uh, up to a point where I have uh, no tension on it and I can just grab the excess uh, cable, give it a pull and take the slack out or let slack into it or disconnect the whole thing. So basically that was my solution. But you can see how that floats above um, the deck and goes in and it works pretty good. So that's basically it. That's the premise. Uh, that's the theory. And it worked pretty good. Um, I'll give you a demonstration now. Uh, one more thing though, I, I am using an encoder. You can see the encoder back there. I have, uh, you can see some of my other videos if you want, uh, how I built the um, the dollies, the uh, pulley system down there. It's attached to the um, 
shaft in the motor goes through. Uh, I put another shaft on the back of the dolly of the pulleys and it's mounted on that encoder right there. Um, it's an optical encoder. No indexing so it um, it's not very accurate but I mean it's accurate but it's not as accurate as like a CNC uh, router would be but um, this is all I need for this. Um, it goes, uh, here's my, my power cord attached to the motor. It goes into a um, 32 times 2 saber tooth motor controller and I got the 32 amp version because um, I won't have to, th this puts out regenerative power and um, they have a system where I can put resistors across the control and the, the um, power lead to uh, drain off that regenerative power and it won't kick back into the uh, power supply that I'm using because I'm not using batteries. Um, I haven't done that yet <clears throat> so I had to put a battery on it just so the, regener the regenerative power would have a place to, to fall into because if it goes past the battery into the power supply it could kick it out. So we don't want that or short it out and they have protection circuits in them that just dumps them. So, so I don't have the problem of it dumping until I put the resistors across there which is a simple thing, I'm just lazy. <laughs> I put a battery on here. Um, don't ask me why. I could have taken the time, but I didn't. Um, this is the um, encoder cable, going back to the encoder I showed you before. It's attached to a kangaroo times two. And um, basically that gives the saber tooth um, your position and speed control that you'll be seeing in a minute. It's uh, got a nice little program in there from Dimension Engineering's um, that will give it uh, speed ramping and everything else. It, it's really pretty slick. Um, after, and it does an auto-tune by itself. I was a little bit worried about that auto-tune feature because I've had problems in the past when I was um, tuning this motor here on my elbow um, from my arm. Uh, I have a potentiometer that you can see on one of my other videos. Uh, I was having a heck of a time. It has a hard time with with articulated um, tunes, I guess. But this wasn't the case with this motor here in this setup. It, it got it on the first tune, which I was just thrilled, just thrilled, because uh, I was just dreading having to having to play with the inside with the um, dimension engineering um, software. Which is which is good. It's, it's good software, but um, I'm not a I'm not that technical where I know all the settings. So the auto tune was great for me. Um, right now I have it um, hooked up to the UART port of an Easy Robotics Easy B. Um, this is actually the UART port right here. But he, the Easy the Easy B has got two other UARTs I can use. Uh, one is here, which is D5 and D6, which is the signal pin, and the other one is D19, I think, back over on this side. Um, I'm going to be using all three ports on this one for the various motors that I'm going to be having on, on this arm mechanism. So uh, I thought I'd set up the rail system uh, motor for using UART1. This is UART0, UART1, UART2 is over here. Um, and because of that, I only need um, these two cables right here going into the kangaroo to handle all the motions of uh, the positioning and the speed on, on this thing. So basically, um, that's it. The rest of this mess uh, I had set up for the... This is all set up for the uh, servos on the main arm itself. So right now, like I said, I've got the wrist locked back. Um, the, I've got the elbow locked down so I can I can test all this and get it running. It's running pretty good. Now you're probably wondering what this is. Um, this is going to be my cable management system and um, I'm going to have to get power for these motors and the signal cables for all my um, all my different various servos back to the EZB and the saber tooth somehow, which is going to be mounted back in there. So those cables are going to be coming over here somehow. I haven't figured it out yet, 
but up and around up to here and back in and down so this will handle those cables because when this goes out it'll go out to the way the back and it'll actually be inside the tube of the arm so those cables got to go with it somehow this will bring it in and bring it out that's my theory anyway <laughs> so i think it's going to work now because um i am using an, an encoder the um kangaroo will not uh, send any signals for movement until the encoder has been homed. Um, that's because it's it could start up at any point and it doesn't really know where the encoder is starting at. Um, so when you first when I first um, power on the robot and power on the uh, kangaroo and all the various uh, components and everything, uh, it's got to go through a homing routine, uh, which actually um, takes it to one of the limit switches, which I do not have. <laughs> That's another th good thing about the kangaroo, is you can use various different kinds of um, endpoints for limit switches. I've chosen not to use physical limit switches, which are actually like micro switches or button switches or whatever. I've chosen to use another option they have is, is a physical stop, and that's what I have here. Um, during auto tuning, it'll take it out slowly and hit the stop, and it'll know that it's stopped, and it will uh, record where the endpoint is here, and then it'll go back. That's the whole routine it goes through. Speed, it, it figures out the speed and the power of the motor, where the endpoints are. So after that's done, it's always stored. Of course, you need to save that for later if something happens. But um, anyway, um, like I was saying, it's. It, because now that it knows where the endpoints are, it doesn't really know where the starting position is. So um, it, when you first start up the kangaroo and the saber tooth and your programs, it's got to go through a homing routine, which is pretty simple. It just takes it out to one stop, and then I use the software to bring it back to where I want it. Um, that's where Easy Robot comes in. Um, the Easy B is. Um, attached to my software in my laptop through Wi-Fi, which is pretty freaking cool. Um, it goes through my home router, or it can do ad hoc uh, right to the computer itself. This one, for testing purpose, I got an ad hoc uh, right, right to the computer, and I've got it um, set up in my, you can see, uh, my, it's attached right to the EZB itself. Uh, my uh, my networking so um, I've got a shortcuts set up up here that when this is just for testing um, from testing the arm and setting it all up uh, the rail system are the uh, ARS the arm rail system which I like to call it I hate acronyms but for this case it's good when I start this up it'll start up a initiation routine which will hook up the EZB which you heard and then it goes through homing it's alive! It's alive! Okay, there it goes. It's this homing. It takes it out to the end, finds a point, stops, and my software will bring it back. There you go. And it's, it looks simple, but there you go. It, um, it's taken me a long time to, to get to this point. It's got, you know, it's got movement, it's got power, it's got brains with easy B. Um, and uh, it's I'm pretty stoked about this whole thing. Now, I can write um, scripts to make it do whatever I want. Um, like, I've got a script here to take it fully out, fully in, and I've got another script here that, that'll rock it back and forth. Basically, I'm going to start the... Um, sorry about that, guys. I'm going to start the one script, which will show you to take it, it takes it all the way out. Hmm. Well, I guess not. Well, there you go. I got some bugs to work out. <laughs> okay, so that should have that should have moved it out. Let me start this one. See if this works. There we go. That's there's a problem with the other script. But anyway, I've got the in and out script that I wrote. Uh, you can see kind of what happens here. Um, Pretty smooth. I've got a couple little things here going on that I'm, I need to dig in and fix. 
like you can hear that there's a click right there when it gets out to this point right here right there um, what that is it's the um, the cable down the bottom it, it flops off itself and it creates a little bit of a jerk so I think I need to uh, take this apart and uh, somehow alleviate that so it won't wrap on top of itself and fall off the top onto uh, onto the bottom layer that's all that is it's really harmless but it's annoying the other thing is I got a squeak down here you can hear it what that is is it's my floating uh, because this is all handmade I had to make this uh, panel float that the um, you can see it kind of wobbling back and forth that my encoders attached to so uh, it, it doesn't destroy the encoder well, what that is is it's it's something in there that's squeaking because I can hold that up and pretty much make it quit I gotta figure something else out for that but basically that's it there, there's my there's my arm um, you can see how that um, wiring um, the wiring contraption <laughs> it is a contraption uh, the wire uh, management system will work uh, basically um, this is the edge right here and it'll be all the way into the arm quite a bit so those wires got to go all the way in there and come all the way out and go back to the CSS on the back so um, there she is <laughs> really really excited about this um, I wanted to take this movie uh, before and share it with you guys before I took it all apart to to fix those two issues that I have with that clunk and that squeak again I don't think it's gonna be anything if I left it like that it's not gonna do anything to the uh, longevity of this thing but I don't like it I like it acting smooth and this will go on like this until you know, the program is programmed to stop it or I stop it but you can see here well, now let me give you a close-up of where she stops I can stop this at any point but this is where it's going to be basically uh, when it's on the robot it's going to be always all the way in and all the way out um, but it goes at different speeds I can set at different speeds or from positions I just don't have that programmed right now inside of easy B I use your robots. You can see, uh, just to give you a shot here, uh, the main program up here is running and it's operating these two scripts that I have right here in and out. So, pretty slick. It's a simple little program. Simple little setup. Flip all the way through. It just took me a, a while to figure all this stuff out. I'm, I'm just excited about this whole thing. So my next step, like I said, is to fix the clunk and the squeak, get everything wired up, um, bring the power of the control over from the arm itself to the EZB and mount the EZB onto the, um, and the power supply is on to the uh, CSS back there somehow. If I can find a room, I'm sure I will. And then uh, we'll have a fully articulated in and, on, in and out arm. So thanks for watching. I know this has been long, but um, I just uh, had to give it to you all. So take care. Enjoy. Bye-bye.